all right what's good youtube today's video is another tips video it's been a while um but you know we have a good one here man i think it's something that everyone needs i needed it um uh, i'm exaggerating i i've done well against this okay what are we doing here what's the point of this video how to hit edward cabrera how i hit edward cabrera and how to be effective and consistent against him a great approach to have and how i particularly face him literally batter by batter so we'll get into it do i need this video like in terms of like going over my own things sure but honestly i've had good success against him i've won almost every game i faced against this card i think i don't think i've lost him maybe once uh i've mercyed him four times the first four, four times i saw him it was 30 runs total but it's just annoying to face him and that's the whole point is that you can get frustrated easily versus this card and that's how you lose guys that's how you lose um we'll go over it but first i want to talk about a few things before I, I show some gameplay what do i think the fundamental issues are with cabrera and why do i think he's so good let me get into it i'll show you guys what i'm talking about right here uh edward cabrera here's his card this is at parallel three so fact you know mine if it's if you have him just base minus three stats everywhere whatever uh what is the issue with this card well obviously he's got Corey kluber's wind up from last year which was glitchy in its own right it's just hard to read ball comes out of a weird angle whatever but it's that sinker that outlier one sinker that just 102 right by you and then all of a sudden it's 95 and it looks like a change up and everyone's swinging through it and then if the servers are bad and the timing windows are off you can feel like you never feel like you could square it up it just feels overwhelming you feel like you're getting suffocated what do you do okay first things to note by the one thing i notice is that if you understand why a card is the way it is or you understand why something's happening it, you know it makes you it makes you feel a little bit less bad about it so one thing to know why does this guy have 95 stamina but can stay in the game forever because he has workhorse guys pitches deep into games by losing energy at a low rate that's unfortunate now you go down outlier one this is where i think it's get annoying for me i don't like outlier one on sinkers i don't like outlier on sinkers period i think it doesn't make any sense um in this game because sinkers are they just make no sense sinkers are supposed to have to be pitches that are effective when they're thrown low in the zone that's when they have their most break it feels like sinkers don't lose that much break still have that second life on it when they're up in the zone they don't flatten out i feel like they need to start flattening out i think that's very important um to help people start getting better at the game to make sinkers not the most overpowered pitch in the game it's been the most overpowered pitch in the game for two years running now and it's not even close everyone looks for a new pitcher to have a sinker or maybe at least a cutter but like pretty much a sinker sinkers are you could have a sinker with max control and movement and a two-seamer max control and movement and people will take the sinker every time two seamers should still be really good they're just not two seamers get pulled for homers way too often they just float they just don't feel like they move two seamers have run in real life really good ones do doesn't feel like it this year it feels like sinkers are just what everyone wants anyway why doesn't this make any sense well edward cabrera has a sinker that's 95 base velocity at this tier for me at, at whatever parallel three 98 for the four seam so theoretically his four seam fastball should be thrown harder okay but he's got outlier one on the sinker but doesn't have outlier on the four seam fastball so what does that mean his sinker can get up to 102 while the fastball can can only go up to 101. so if i have if you go into the game you'll see that eric cabrera has a range of a velo from 93 to 100 it says then you factor in outlier one then it's 93 to 102. now you have a sinker from 93 to 102 thrown two different ways if you have a sinker at 93 it's like a change up compared to a sinker at 102 that's moving and breaking like a sinker and just goes right through your barrel and we know singers don't work well they're, they're not they're not programmed very well so it just, everything looks weird how could someone throw a sinker at 102 but not their four seam fastball it doesn't make any sense i think if you give someone a sinker with outlier one the four seam has to have it automatically too i personally think no sinker should have outlier i think his fastball should be harder i think his sinker should be hard but not as hard um especially since his live series card doesn't even have a sinker i don't think he even throws one i think they just made that up but um that's basically all the background on this guy um Mike Cabrera is 10 and 0 with a 4.46 ERA, a lot of ship it games, so a lot of random homers, but a .87 whip, 88 Ks in 66 innings. He's done quite well overall for your boy. Um, anyways, let's go into actual gameplay versus him. I'm gonna use a roster. I will link the info for the man below who helps us out. This is Jr. Stros, Jr. Underscore Stros in the roster vault. It's Jr. Underscore Stros, seven one fourth inning. He's got all the new bosses added, so I use that. He also has Edward Cabrera on this. Um, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So you go down here. When you load that roster up, I pick against the Angels. You use the Astros. You are the Astros. You queue up. I'm going to use my Create Stadium. You're going to notice something different about Edward Cabrera here. Don't be alarmed. He wanted to get... Because he had Cabrera in the game coded, but he didn't have Outlier 1. He couldn't get it because you can only 
really change certain cards. He used, if you see, we'll switch. We're, we're hitting. Justin Topa, I believe his name is. This card is outlier one. So what he did was he changed Topa's picks, pitch mix, gave him Cabrera's height and everything and his motion. So it's identical to facing Edward Cabrera. It just it does not look like him. That's the only thing that's different. But other than that, it's fine. You see, it, you'll see. I'm also on strike zone high, guys. I made the change to feel less suffocated on strike zone. I felt like I was getting, I, was, I wasn't reading pitches well and I was getting blown by by all the fastballs. So uh, I switched to strike zone high. Movement, movement, movement. Sit middle, wait for that sinker. Uh, it's crazy. Still, still hits. Um, still hits pretty hard. How do I approach him with a lefty on the uh, at the plate? Well, I keep it loose. I keep my PCI generally center, and just wait for that sinker. Key things to note against Edward Cabrera: don't start chasing corner pitches early in the count. Even if you square them up, they're gonna get drilled right into the ground. Uh, you want to look for your pitch. Don't swing at all speed early in the count if you can. If you see it well and if it's down the middle, fine, go for it. But what I'm saying is the odds you see three pitches in a row in that bat and one of them's not a sinker that you're ready for, I doubt it. You're gonna be you're gonna see at least one sinker. See, like that's not a bad swing. Even if I was all over that, it's gonna be a ground ball, maybe through the hole, but it could be caught. You wanna try and wait for that one middle, middle sinker you're gonna get. You're gonna get a sinker that's generally more middle than the rest of them, at least once in that bat. Uh control is where he lacks the most consistency even though his control is pretty decent but don't start chasing sinkers up on the corners try and catch the middle like that that's a little low but it's middle you can do a lot with that even if you're earlier late ish you still uh slap in the gaps i'm feeling like i see it right now but it's, it's still pretty gas uh keep the movements clockwise counterclockwise keep rhythm one two one two drop that was the one that's gonna blow you away. See, don't get, and that's another thing too. Don't get frustrated if you get blown back by one of his sinkers or one of his pitches. You have two more pitches to work with. Getting frustrated against this guy is how people generally lose. That was one of those changeup sinkers. That was 98, but that one was totally different than the 101 up in the zone. Uh, I wish the ones up in the zone didn't have as much break as they do all over that one. You see, not a, not a fantastic swing, but it's enough to get in the gap. Those little chip shots are gonna be the ones you need. Find a sinker that has more of the plate than the others. Ooh, I feel like I was on that one. A little underneath. Still not bad. Overall, putting more consistent swings on the ball. That's going to leave. We love scamming. Oh, almost did. We love scam industry. Now, the last thing I'll go over here, uh, specific-wise, this is the toughest one for most people, right? It is approaching Cabrera righty-righty. This is what I do. Same thing as versus, with a lefty at the plate, but I cheat in. And I wait for that sinker. That's actually a base hit, funny enough. Second baseman ain't getting that, and they don't shift trout, so most of the time I don't. What, how do I okay so if I cheat inside get the sinker great what if I do if I what do I do if I don't get that sinker what do I do if I get a slider you just drag here we go right here I didn't do it there but you want to almost like drag along with the slider kind of read it or just axe at it straight axe axe chop you're holding and then right, I'm gonna try and get him to throw a slider and show you guys what I'm talking about that was just flames I was all over that we're gonna throw a slider and we'll even put it in this general quadrant these two spots here um what do i mean by axe to it so you do your usual pre-pitch pre -pitch movements cheat up and in and then you kind of just axe right to it straight diagonal line if even if you're early on like i was if you're on it you have a great chance of pulling in the gap or over the fence um it's one of those things where it's like edward cabrera's slider um has it hangs more times than it doesn't it's very slow all over that one, late side of good. Is that have enough to get on it? So that's what I'm saying with that axe movement. I don't know how that didn't leave. Wow, that's crazy. Um, the axe movement is just straight up. Wherever you're starting, whether it be here or here, just quarter, right to it. Boom. See, I'm just early, but I got enough on it. It's a hanger. It really is, guys, online. You'll notice it. You'll, you'll also notice another thing, too. If you're a righty-righty and you get your weak righty-righty versus Cabrera, if you're cheating up and in, you'll see that slider looks so much slower when it drips over the plate. Um, and you'll, be, you'll catch up to it more times than not. Um, one thing a lot of people have been doing, and I've done it myself too, with a guy like Soriano, uh, versus Cabrera. Oh, I forgot what I was doing there for a second. I was just pressing X. I'll stop talking while hitting. Uh, Soriano versus Cabrera. A lot of people were swinging contact swings early in the count. I've done that too. I personally only do it with two strikes now. Um, but even then, I'm trying to get away from contact swinging in general. They've claimed, they've claimed they're going to nerf it. They've mentioned it multiple times. They know contact swing is a little bit OP right now. Um, why is contact swinging OP? Quick little breakdown. It's because, uh... The, there's a very little exit velo drop off even though you're you know it's a contact swing people are still hitting nukes and it widens your pci which is great and it speeds up your bat 100 percent straight to the ball it's way quicker um 
than it should be. So it's, there's a lot of problems with it, and also it, and you can never really ever strike out. That is another thing too. Uh, you could your PCI inner and outer could be nowhere near the ball, and I've seen way too many foul balls. It's killing All Star games like VR or All Star players in general. Um, they're not, no one's having a lot of fun right now, man, with that in the game. So they're working on it. That and R2. But anyways, back. I digress. Back to the point here. Same thing. Movements. Pre pitch. Pre pitch prep. Oh my god, that slider! I hammered it. Right. I hammered it. So his slider and curveball. You'll notice, guys. It's his rest of his pitches are really not that strong, man. They're really not that strong. Everything is kind of easy. You see curveball once, you'll be fine. Change up, it floats. It's hard to locate. And the four seam fastball is nothing compared to that sinker, man. You guys are going to be okay if you follow these tips. I really recommend keeping the same pre. I, I recommend keeping the same pre pitch preparations, whatever they may be. If you're someone who holds it here, I prefer to stay rhythmic, very loose with the PCI, gentle hold. Boom, crushed. Follow it all the way through. The lighter you are on your finger with the PCI, the more flexibility you'll have and more dexterity. You won't be jamming the, at the ball so much. You'll be loose and you'll, you'll feel yourself tracking it more. Oh, I just got underneath that. But, you know, principle being I wasn't fooled. PCI was a little inaccurate, but the point being I knew what pitch was coming. I knew where it was going to be, and I swung at the perfect time for it. That's all I got for you guys. If you need any more tips or any more questions you guys have, type them down below. I'd be more than happy to help. If it's a specific picture you guys want me to go over, let me know. I know that this video is definitely needed for a lot of people. So uh, if you watch this video to the end, thank you. Type uh, s'mores in the comment section. Um, just know I love you for watching it. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.